I'd love some. A touch of milk. Built in 1888 by Andrew J. Happer. Um, if you look him up on the internet, it says that he was a Civil War hero. Of course, that was America against America, so there was no cowards. If you survived, you were automatically a hero. Uh, it said he was an entrepreneur, and he lived in this grand house. This wasn't it. <laughs> he built this house to live in until his house was completed, so it was about two years. If you leave here and you go down to the college, make a right, go up one full block and make a right, you'll see the college administration building. It's roughly about 32 rooms, I think. That's his home. There was another, uh, like an Andrew J, or, or sorry, John Hallam, who was another businessman. He lost in the sheriff's sale. Uh, there was somebody in between, a part of the family. Then it was um, owned by the college, the president or dean, whatever they call him, he owned it for X amount of years. Then it went private again, the Norman and Bess Lines. They were the founders of our, our library here. Um, they were like philanthropists, kind of like the Goodwill. If you had clothing that you didn't need, your kids grew up and went away, you dropped it off to them. They repaired it, they fixed it up, and in the wintertime, all the people from the neighborhood that needed clothing would come through and they'd give them blankets, shoes, clothing, and all that kind of stuff. They had no children. And they passed on and left it to their housekeeper. But they didn't leave many money to operate it. So it kind of got lowered down a little bit and, and they ended up auctioning everything off but don't feel sorry for them there was one china buffet in, 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 the, in the dining room that alone sold to a dealer for ten thousand dollars and this house was all three floors completely full of real antiques not like what we have and then comes us <laughs> and what's life like in washington peaceful quiet the college is a couple blocks down um we don't get to meet people other than people like you and guests because you, you have a funeral home here, so you don't meet too many people there. <laughs> the house next door is empty. That's just sold. People will be moving in there in another week or so. Um, but other than that, it's just our guests. Now, we're busy when college is in because that's our main draw. Uh, the second draw is we seem to be halfway to everywhere in the world. The third reason, believe it or not, is genealogy. Our historical society is not like most. They will sit down with you and they'll work with you. They won't just say, go over there and look in the corner or, or look on that bookshelf. They actually sit down with you and work with you. And if you call them in advance and tell them what you're looking for and you're coming here, if they have time, they'll actually research stuff for you so that when you get here, it's already started. And the, the blogs that do historical kind of stuff know that. So that brings a lot of people to us. And before this was Pennsylvania, before the Mason-Dixon line, it was actually Virginia. So if you're researching a lot of things from Virginia, you'll find it here in our courthouse or in our, our records. And then it, it, from that, this courthouse, our courthouse, which is right up the street, you can't see it sitting down, but you'll, you'll see the dome if you look up that way. It predates Pittsburgh's courthouse. So a lot of records that you're looking for in Pittsburgh, you're not going to find in Pittsburgh either. You'll find them here. So that brings a lot of people here.